this week's Tech Talks. Uh, as you know, uh, kickoff topic today will be about the new preset management features that we implemented in 3.1. Uh, the real ability to uh, manage your selective global and universal data. Uh, I realized maybe not everybody understands the um, what the Tech Talks are about. Uh, we've started these because we really want to kind of bring the classroom to you. you know, obviously, it's maybe not so easy uh, for everybody to fly out to New York or uh, fly out to LA and you know buy a ticket, you sit with us for three days, but you really only have a couple hours of questions. So since uh, North America is a huge country, uh, this webinar system allows you to uh, raise your hand uh, during the process, just like you would in a classroom. Uh, type questions. Uh, we'll happily get to those. But each webinar will have a nice kickoff topic, just something that we see from the support line. And the rest of the time is is opened up to you to ask questions. So any time that I'm talking, feel free to uh, type those questions in, and, and we will uh, get to those in order uh, when we get to the question section of our uh, webinar. Uh, joining me today is Kat Covell, my colleague. Uh, she'll be the one that's uh, going to be reading your questions and uh, maybe replying to some of them by, by typing or uh, certainly reading the, uh, those to me when the time comes. Uh, so let's jump into this topic about presets. Since almost the beginning of uh, Grandma 2, and even since Grandma May 1, we have these things called selective presets, universal presets, global presets. What does that really mean? Well, it's about a tool that makes programming easier. Okay, so take a mythos, for example. If, if you haven't done any custom gobos in a mythos, and you have uh, 50 mythos in your rig, uh, they all have the same gobo wheel. Well, you go from one show to the next and you add uh, 10 more mythos. Well, instead of having to restore data at all your existing presets, if you had been using global presets, those 10 additional, 10 additional uh, mythos would still work with those presets. Um, Universal is something that I tend to use a lot when it comes to I just need to have a bunch of presets in my start show. So I will have a lot of universal uh, color presets so that no matter where I go, if I walk in, if I've got 10 minutes to program and I don't have time to color match the fixtures, I at least have a bunch of like red, green, blue, CMY uh, presets that I can choose from. Same with dimmer. You know, dimmer is kind of one of those things that you're kind of tweaking all the time, but because we have touch screens in the console, you want it to be easy, uh, an easy way to get to 50 and 80 and 65%. So maybe make some universal presets uh, for dimmer. They give you quick ways to get to those, get to those uh, dimmer values. Now position is one of those ones where you're probably always going to use selective data. And selective is going to be used when each individual fixture has a unique value. So if you take all your moving lights, and you point them on that singer, every single one, those 10, those 10 lights, each one has a unique set of pan and tilt values. So we can't have global. You don't have global, like, not all fixtures are going to be at the same pan tilt value and point at the singer. Those will be all over the place. What's, where might you use a global or a universal position preset? 50-50. So you got that home, that home is almost always going to be 50-50. So I actually, in my preset pool for position, I will have one universal position preset, which will be uh, pan and tilt at 50-50, so that I always have a preset I can uh, grab that puts my light at uh, pointing straight down, which is going to be the 50 position. Um, so that's kind of the, the background philosophy. I hope I explained that well. It, it can be a little confusing. But now what I'm going to do is jump into uh, the OnPC software. So you can see my screen, and we'll kind of look at what new tools exist. So the old software, when, when you stored a, a selective, a global, or a universal preset, 
it was really only beneficial when you first stored that preset and when you patched new, new fixtures. Otherwise, the data was all selective. So if you had a orange, for example, that you needed to kind of color correct, you had to grab all the fixtures in the rig and do a little update. With the new soft, with this uh, 3.1 software, we actually have what are called fixture types that you can look at when you edit the preset and make a slight change to the fixture type value that automatically applies to all of the, the uh, fixtures that are referencing that one. So let me do an example of how I would potentially make a global uh, color preset. So I have alpha spots, alpha washes, and alpha beams in my rig, and I want these all to be a global preset. So I grab all of them, and I want them to be this cyan. Now, since we're working in the software or a previs environment, this is perfect. They all look exactly the same uh, color, but you guys know in the real world, uh, you're going to have to do a little slight correction for the spots versus the washes for the beams, especially if we're talking about different manufacturers. So I might grab that one and do a little tweak, and I'll grab this one and tweak it a little that way. So in a perfect world, I could see that those don't quite match up. And then just like you did in the old software, you come here and into your store options menu, you toggle to global, and we store that here, and we've created a global preset. And what that does is I can grab all of these, right? hit that preset, and that one preset applies to those. And you'll notice how the spots, which had their own value, differs from the wash is value, which also differs from the beam value. Now, in, in the old software, I used to, if I wanted to modify something about the wash fixtures, I used to have to select them and, and do this little tweaking. Now, in the new software, in 3.1, I'm instead going to edit that preset. So I say edit, say and. And this is where you can see the fixture types I'm talking about. And they end up showing up at the very top. And it, that's what the FT stands for. It stands for fixture type. If I want to change something about the spots, for example, I will select just the spots. And you'll notice as I modify this value, if you look at all these gray values, since these are gray to indicate they're referencing the fixture type. Okay, so I might do that, and then I hit update. Do I want to update color 4.1, so that's preset pool 4, uh, preset number 1. So we hit OK, and now I've just updated that preset so the spots have a slightly modified color. The other thing we hear a lot is uh, you've got you've got these, these uh, spots in your rig, and maybe number 5 is not calibrated so well. Well, in that case, number five needs to have its own selective data. So I, once again, I can, I can right click or I can choose edit that preset. And spot number five is the same as the rest. But maybe I want that to have a unique value because I need to do the calibration. All I have to do is select that one fixture, modify it a little bit, and since this data is active red background, that has now become selective. However, I'm still in, in edit mode so make sure you choose update. And now notice what happens to the preset. The preset is labeled S and G because it's telling you it's got global fixture type data as well as individual selective fixture data. And you can once again see this now. It's not a secret. You can see it just by choosing edit and edit the preset. And you'll notice the fixture type data is here as well as fixture 105 spot 5 has a unique set of values. So if I grab the fixture type and I modify, it doesn't affect 105. 105 is still unique. Okay. Now the other scenario that we come across is, oh, I've got selective data in here and I want to remove it. I want that to go back to referencing uh, the original fixture type. Once again, I use the preset editor and grab spot number five. And I say delete, hit delete twice, you get the remove. I want to remove all the color data for 105. You notice how it says remove here. I'm going to update that preset. 
and now the little S goes away. 105 is now back to referencing the fixture type. Now, of course, it's GREMA2, so there's multiple ways to remove data, but that's just one I wanted to show you how you would use it in the preset manager. If we look at these universal ones, I want to point out when I edit that, there's actually a universal uh, fixture type, which is 1.1.1. So universal, keep in mind right now, does only apply to dimmer position and color. Remember, that's here. With squinty eyes like me, I'm pretty sure it only applies to three preset types right now, which is something that's, of course, on our wish list to open up to the rest of the preset types. Uh, I know we've heard some confusion about why it doesn't work with control, and it's like, oh, it's, uh, it's just a bug. Position, strangely, is one that I've heard a lot in the, the support land that people are uh, not using selective or they're accidentally using global. One of the things you have to keep in mind is that there might have been some old workflow that you were getting away with in 3.0 and prior that really wasn't, uh, I would call, good programmer workflow, and we've had a few questions about why is my preset data not updating correctly, and it's because now we're kind of, we put tools in place to manage your data better so that you do manage your data better and become a better programmer. Uh, so position, for example, is something that I would always want to store as selective. There's a very few cases where I would use global un or universal, not saying never, but normally I'm going to do selective. And in the old software, we had these, these store options where it was selective, global, universal, and we had to save a default, and it was always this nightmare of like, oh, but I want to store selective for position and global for color, and various preset types have their different uh, 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 store mode that you want to use. So we added a fourth uh, store mode here called preset type default. I think it's a good idea to save that as your default store option by choosing this and save as default. And then in the pools, in the yellow ball here, you can click on that and you can choose the default store mode for any time you're storing a preset to that pool. So global universal. So for position, I want to do selective. For color, I would like to do global. And that means that you don't have to always jump into your store options menu. When I store this, uh, I actually should activate some data. When I just store here, it's selective, but when I store here, it's a G. So that's by preset type automatically. Naturally, you can override that anytime by holding this and choosing, oh, this, I want a universal uh, gobo, for example, or universal color. I have no active color, but um, that's the steps. So. Hopefully that clears up a little confusion about preset management.